Hi guys, welcome to Wicked Movie Channel, and this is the second part of the best thrillers released in 2022. We hope it will be useful and everyone will find something new to watch. And if you have already seen everything, then follow the links in the descriptions to the first and third parts of this selection. Orphan First Kill after escaping from Estonian psychiatric hospital, 31-year-old Lina, who looks 9-year-old due to illness, finds a girl who looks like her among the missing children's ads. She is from a wealthy American family, and now miraculously discovered Esther returned to happy parents and big brother. This movie is prequel to Orphan, a fairly well-known and successful movie released 13 years ago. The new movie tells the backstory of the serial killer Esther. Initially, the film seems optional and obviously a failure. Too much time have passed, the main actress has already matured, and the shooting of the prequel looks like just another attempt to make money on a once successful movie. But in fact, it is quite tolerable and watchable. The plot has its own unexpected twists, and in general everything is filmed in the spirit of the original. The movie is not for everyone, first of all, those who have watched the original will like it. 7th place. Orphan. First kill. Speak no evil. While on a vacation in Italy, the Danish family Bjorn, Louise, and their daughter Agnes meets the Dutch family Patrick, his wife Karen, and his son Abel. Accepting the invitation of new friends, a family from Denmark soon arrives at their house, hoping to have a great time. But soon, the guests notice that their new hospitable friends are behaving strangely, and gradually their behavior becomes more and more frightening. The film starts out like a classic horror movie. A man and a woman are driving in a car at night with music pumping up. Then the frames are replaced by a more pleasant picture, but the feeling that something bad will happen will not disappear. The very situation in the movie puts so much pressure on the psyche that is very uncomfortable to watch, but it's simply impossible to tear yourself away. This film has clear social subtext. Politeness and tolerance have become stronger than the feeling of self-preservation. And having met with Evil, a civilized person first of all tries to make friends with him. An interesting look at modern society and at the same time a creepy but fascinating movie. Sixth place. Speak no evil. Where the Crawdads Sing in 1969, a small North Carolina swamp town, young man Chase Andrews dies under mysterious circumstances. The suspect in the murder is Kia Clark, a local hermit nicknamed Swamp. As the trail progress, Kia reveals her detailed biography to lawyer Tom Milton. Her difficult childhood, relationships with people are revealed, including her affair with the deceased Chase. The film is based on the 2019 bestseller book of the same name. Interest and popularity were also transferred to the film adaptation. The movie showed good fees relative to its budget. However, not all fans of the thriller will like the film, since the tone of the narration here is too melodramatic and there are not so many elements of the genre itself. Instead of suspense, the focus is on the protagonist's love affairs, which leave a really interesting court drama in the backyard of romance. The movie is not for everyone, and there is only one way to find out if you like it. Where the Crow Dads Sing The Weekend Away Beth, leaving her daughter and husband in London for a while, comes to Croatia for the weekend to visit her best friend Kate. After gathering in a club, she wakes up and discovers that her friend has disappeared. Despite Beth's attempts to get through the police, the staff believe that nothing terrible has happened. Armed with the support of taxi driver Zane, the tourist is determined to figure out what happened last night. A detective thriller with a couple of tense moments and a lot of suspects to complicate story. To discuss a fairly simple plot, there are a lot of twists and turns that at some point starts to get a little boring. This is a solid mid-range movie that is deal for just taking an hour and a half, but it's unlikely to be interest to fans of complex thrillers. Fourth place. The Weekend Away. I came by. UK Today. Two street artists leave a rebellious inscription, I came by, in the homes of the rich. After a split in a relationship, one of the guys sneak into the house of the next victim of his own. But the walls of the luxurious mansion hide a dark secret of its owner. And the main character is not ready for the truth that he will find in a dark basement of the house belonging to the former judge. 
the plot is extremely simple, and the nature of the secret that the sinister pensioner keeps can be predicted without spoilers. However, this thriller contains some really poignant moments, and in general it quickly turns into an exciting trip, frightening not so much in visual as in context and subtext. By the end you realize what a nightmarish story you have just been told. A tense and emotional movie with a simple and atmospheric plot. Third place, I came by. Emily the Criminal Emily has a bad job, there is never enough money, there are no special prospects for employment, only her friend promises something all the time, but a colleague really helps and offers to replace him at one of the part-time jobs. Emily has to cash out fake credit cards, she is scared, she doesn't really want to do this, but her dark side takes over, and now the girl is already involved in a simple fraudulent scheme. This film made a lot of noise at the Sundance Film Festival, and one of the main advantages was the incredibly played main character, Aubrey Plaza. Emily acts within her tough nature, which doesn't allow her to bend to retreat, guided by logic, not emotions, and she doesn't give herself offense at the level of instincts. It turns out to be an excellent crime thriller and social drama. There is chases, shootings, betrayal, but also love, an exciting movie that deserves your attention. Second place. Emily the Criminal The Black Phone 1978 Streets in the suburbs of Denver are covered with flyers with photographs of missing children. There are rumors that they are kidnapped by a maniac nicknamed Grabber. One day, the modest boy Finn also falls into the clutches of the villain. Grabber takes him to some house and puts him in an empty basement, where there is only a mattress and a disconnected black phone. But soon the device starts ringing. Finn is conducted by the previous victims of the maniac. The movie is based on a true story of the same name by Joey Hill, son of Stephen King. And in terms of atmosphere, it is just like the adaptation of The King. The main characters are children and the genre of the movie is horror, but acts more like a crime thriller about a kidnapping victim than a horror about a maniac and ghosts. There are also elements of a coming-of-age drama. The film was directed by Scott Derrickson, who previously directed Doctor Strange, Sinister and Six Emily Rose Demons. And this time the director made a good movie again. First place, The Black Phone. Well, this is it. Thanks for watching. Share your movie impressions in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and put the big thumbs up. See you. Bye.